There's a lot of myths and under, misunderstandings about autism. Um, myths about, oh, people with autism don't have any empathy, um, when that's not true at all. In fact, just like anything else, it's kind of that extreme where you'll have them have, it may seem like they have very little empathy in a given situation, but a lot of times what's going on is they actually have hyper empathy, where they're just actually over responding to the other person's emotional state and then their response to that may not be what a neurotypical person or a person who doesn't have autism would expect. And so it looks to the neurotypical or normal person that the person with autism doesn't have the empathy when in reality they may actually have too much empathy. Um, I remember when I was a child, uh, every single week we would watch different strokes because I'm just really old. It was a great show and I would watch about 10-15 minutes of the episode and Arnold, played by Gary Coleman, would get himself into some horrible mess and I would run out of the room because at this point, now I'm feeling all nervous and scared for poor Gary Coleman and I never saw the end of any episode of Different Strokes because I couldn't handle that. Um, so the hyper empathy is definitely there. I was talking with someone with autism who's uh, in their 70s who used to always love watching Star Wars and Harry Potter and that stuff and I uh, asked, you know, hey, how's, how's this going? And he's like, oh, I, I got rid of all that stuff. And I was like, well, what happened? And he's like, oh, it's, it's too much for me. It's like, you've seen those movies literally like thousands of times. He's like, yeah, I just, I just can't handle it anymore. It's too much for me. So just the hyper empathy still going. Um, on the research side, the, the scientists will talk about what's called mirror neurons, where it's that part of the brain that fires that says, oh, hey, you know, what this person's experiencing, you're also experiencing. And for a long time, it was thought that they were broken for people with autism, and that might be the source of this apparent lack of empathy. But what they're showing now is actually, they were always there and they're just firing differently. And actually by the time that they hit 30, they've caught up with the neurotypical person in terms of the, the number and the wiring of their mirror neurons. And then after that, they actually exceed the number of mirror neurons of, of neurotypicals. And so hyper empathy is definitely something that you'll see, and it'll cause a lot of those socially inappropriate, supposedly inappropriate responses uh, are because the person is hyper empathetic and now they're just being overwhelmed and overloaded. And so they may laugh when they're supposed to be crying or they may have the right response, but it's delayed because um, they had to really process it through a few times and be like, oh wait, this is how the world is gonna expect me to show that. And so they'll show it, but a little later. But that doesn't mean it's not there. Um, and the same would go for any other kind of emotional thing. Um, a lot of times people with autism struggle to identify their own emotions. It's called alexithymia in, in the, the cadence of the clinicians, but it's just that struggle, that ability to be able to put into words what's going on in their mind and emotionally. Uh, again, doesn't mean they don't have those emotions, just mean they may be occurring very quickly or they may be occurring in a way that doesn't seem to fit any of the definitions that they've seen in a textbook somewhere and so it's hard for them to identify what that emotion is.